What is going on everyone? This tutorial is on how we can flatten nested JSON data into columns in a dynamic frame in PySpark with AWS Glue. If you're working with data from a NoSQL database such as DynamoDB or MongoDB for example, it's very common that your data is stored in an array of JSON objects to manage the relationship between keys. For example, in this JSON payload, we can see that there are two addresses and cities that belong to one customer ID. In this video, I'm going to walk through how we can flatten this data set into columns in AWS Glue with PySpark so additional analysis can be performed, or you can simply write this data to a relational database like Postgres, or you can store your data in a columnar format like Parquet. The step-by-step -step walkthrough will be using a customer order JSON file that has multiple addresses for each customer ID. The data is stored in AWS S3 and is cataloged in our AWS Glue catalog already. We'll be creating an AWS Glue job with PySpark to transform our data. All right, so I'm in the AWS Glue catalog. I've already went ahead to upload my JSON file to AWS S3. I then crawled that directory to create my Glue catalog table. And if we scroll down to the schema here, we can see that it has detected the schema of our data set. We can see that we have an int uh, for the order ID. We have a customer ID, which is a string, total amount that is a string, and order date that is a string. Now, the JSON part is stored in this array. And what's nice in the catalog is if we we click on the array, it's going to open up the schema data type. We can see that within our address array, we have an object that has the city and street address. So I just want to point out that the data type is crucial because the PySpark function we're going to be using is going to be unnesting the array. All right, so let's head over to our Jupyter Notebook that is using interactive glue sessions to review the code to unnest our data. All right, so I'm in my Jupyter Notebook that is leveraging interactive glue sessions. I already went ahead to import my Python based libraries. Now, in order for us to unnest our data, the first step is to create a dynamic frame from our JSON data. So if our data is in the glue catalog already, then we can use the create dynamic frame from catalog option. So we just have to pass in the name of the database as well as the name of the table. So I've defined this as a variable called dynamic frame underscore customer. And if we just give that a run to show you what it looks like, you can see that we have our order ID, customer ID, total amount, order date, and address. Now, I also want to point out that if you're not using the catalog, you know, maybe it's just JSON files that you've uploaded to S3, you can still query this in Glue, that's possible. Um, there's a different method that we can leverage. So it's called create dynamic frame from options. We just have to pass a couple of parameters in here. So the connection type, so saying it's from S3. And for connection options, we just have to pass the path of where our data is stored. And then finally, the format of the data. So here, we're defining it as JSON. So I'm just going to run this just to show you that the results are the same. So let's just give that a run here. And great, you can see that we have our data that is being imported into our glue job the exact same. Uh, for the purpose of this demo, we're just going to go ahead and use the dynamic frame created from the catalog. All right, so the next step in order to unnest our JSON file, there's a transform that exists that we can use on our dynamic frame that we've created, and it's called relationize. So it takes two parameters that are required. The first is going to be the name of the root dynamic frame. So this is, I would say, the, the dynamic frame that doesn't have the nested data. I just called it root here. And then the second parameter is going to be uh, location in S3 that we're going to be storing this temporary data. So I just passed it a location in my data lake. And as you can see here, I just called it the customer orders with address underscore temp. So I know it's a temporary directory. And great. So once we have this, what this is going to create is a dynamic frame collection. Now, if we just run the unnested dot keys, we can see that within our dynamic frame collection, we have two dynamic frames. So we have the root and the root address. Great. Now, in order to see what this looks like, let's just comment out our to select statement. So now what we're going to be doing is just selecting the root address to show you what it looks like and the root dynamic frame. Great. So what we can see is the first dynamic frame here is the unnested or flattened JSON data. And we can see that within this dynamic frame, we have an ID and the index is going to be the addresses within that ID. And now we have um, the city and street ad address. Great. So as you can see here, we've successfully flattened our JSON data. And if we scroll down here, we can see that we still have our order ID, our customer ID, 
the total amount and order date. Um, and now we have this address column, but instead of it being the array like we saw earlier, we just have an integer. And this is important to know because we can actually use this column to join it to our flattened dynamic frame. So if we wanted to, let's say, still have those relationships, but in a columnar format, we can join that together. So let's just go ahead and show you how to join this data in the event you wanted to query it um, all together. So the next step is if we wanted to do that, we needed to actually create dynamic frames from our dynamic frame collection. So using the select method, we can pass in the name of the key. So how I got that, if we scroll up here, um, using the keys, we saw that we actually had um, two names that were associated with our keys. And now I'm just passing that in. So I've called one the root underscore address dynamic frame and the other is just the root. So now that we have our two frames, we can actually join them together. So using the join transform, I'm passing in the root dynamic frame and we're gonna be joining it on the address column. So if we look here, this is the address column here. And the path two is gonna be the column that we're gonna be joining it from our unnested data set. So if we go up here, we can see that it is just called ID. So we're going to be passing that as the join criteria and the frame two is the dynamic frame we want to join it to. So, and this is going to be the unnested dynamic frame. So we can see that's defined here. Now, if we just use the show method here to show what our data set looks like, we now see that we've successfully joined our data. Now we have a dynamic frame that has this data joined together. Great, so now we can continue on. Maybe we wanna write this flattened data to our relational database or do additional analyses. We can do that. All right, one thing I wanna point out that you should be aware of is because we're now joining this data, it is becoming a one-to-many relationship. So if we look at the count of our initial data set here, oops, using the count method, and we're just gonna print that, we can see that we have a thousand records. Okay, now if we print the count of the join data set together, what are we gonna see here is that we actually have a lot more records coming through. And the reason for this is we have multiple addresses per customer ID. So this is something just to know about and it may impact your analysis. All right, so I hope you found this tutorial helpful and it now makes more sense on how we can flatten or unnest JSON files using PySpark and AWS Glue. Thanks so much for watching, and if you thought this video was helpful, please hit that like button. Thanks again, and see you next time for more videos on data engineering on AWS.